these things happen in football sometimes. I just have this weird feeling that we could actually get something out of this game. I'm, I'm just looking forward to the girls being able to show all of that off. Welcome to the pre-match pint of London Pride. We're here at the Fuller's Brewery Shop in Chiswick. Beast fans, get yourself down here for 10% as always. It's been a tough week, but hopefully we can give you something to smile about in the next 15 minutes or so. And joining me this week is Natalie Sawyer and ahead of a huge game for Brentford women at the weekend, their first ever game at the G-Tech. I'd like to say joining us is the gaffer, Carly Osborne, <laughs> and first team player, Amber Lloyd. Thank you all for joining me. How are you all? Very well. Very well. Very well. Thank you very well, much. We always start with a toast. Um, I've got two this week. First to, to Igor Yarmaluk for making yes. his debut for the first team last yep, night. Congrats. I guess we one of the few highlights. <laughs> Second of all, it's got to be ahead of Sunday to the women's team. Really exciting. So cheers to you guys. We'll get on to that, of course, in a minute. Hopefully very quickly. Um, but we do have to talk about... It's been a tough couple of weeks, if we're being honest. Um, two results that feel pretty tough to take. Um, Forest last minute equaliser um, and then last night which is probably the rawest so mm -hmm. I feel like we'll probably go in there first. Natalie you could see in the post match and at the end of the game how gutted the players were actually and how gutted Thomas seemed. Before Thomas has spoken a lot about the competition and this wasn't us taking this competition lightly like some other clubs do or taking our opponents lightly in that regard was it? Not at all. When I saw the first 11 that he put out, I was quite, quite surprised at how strong we were going with it. I know he'd already alluded before the game that he was going to start some of the, the first teamers, but I still didn't expect it to be as strong as it was. And yeah, it, you know, I think we've all come away from it quite disappointed, especially as you take the lead so early on in the game and you think, well, this is just going to be like what Oldham was before or, or likewise a, a similar sort of result that you just... It just didn't, I don't know, for whatever reason, it just didn't pan out that way. And, but I felt at, at times in that game, right at the beginning, after we took, even had taken the lead, I thought, we're controlling this so well. Yeah. It was so comfortable. But it felt like a training game, really. It was, maybe that was the biggest issue, ultimately, that it didn't feel as competitive as it perhaps should have felt. Uh, Carly, again, I'm, I'm using a lot of the post-match stuff because it's quotes from... Yeah. Christian and, and Thomas, two senior figures, obviously Thomas being the first team coach. Christian just, again, like Ivan Tony, was pretty bullish recently and just said, not good enough. Yeah. He said, the fans turned up tonight as a sellout mm. for a cup game against the League Two side. So again, no disrespect whatsoever for Gillingham. And we'll actually get onto that because brilliant from G-Tech, obviously offered a lot of free tickets to, to, to kids for the day. But he said, we didn't give them the performance they expected. And he said, we're gonna have to analyze it. So. How do you analyse that game? And you, you've been in games on the other side of that as well, obviously with Brentford, yeah. playing Everton and stuff. What, what's it like from both sides of that? Um, I think obviously from, from Brentford's side, first and foremost, I think it's good that uh, Christian was, was honest. Um, I think they're going to need that honesty when they, when they analyse things. They, they've, you know, the players have got high, high standards. Um, and for whatever reasons, they didn't quite hit them yesterday um, and, and in recent weeks. but. Um, I think the fact that they're, they're happy to be open and honest in public, they're definitely having those honest conversations behind closed doors as well. Um, and I think it's just important that, you know, you, you kind of get to the real whatever issue it may be in order to, to get yourselves back where we need to be. And then from there, I think, we, you know, we'll, we'll move forward. On the other side, I think, you know, it was, it was I agree with Natalie, like it, it really felt a bit like a training game, like it's a little bit too easy at times. Mm. And I don't know if we just got a little bit complacent because even when I was commentating it was kind of you were just waiting for the next goal you yeah. just you always felt it was going to come you were just kind of waiting for the next goal it was just yeah. a matter of when um, and obviously as the game went on I think first half I thought first half we was we was decent to be fair mm. I think we could have scored more goals I thought we I thought we did well I thought we played well played some really good football at times we well, um, just thought we were going to kick on naturally. yeah exactly that yeah and happen. then the second half came and you kind of thought all right we're really going to kick on again and I thought we started okay for the first 10 minutes to be fair kept them pinned in it was similar to the first half and then it just kind of took a complete flip and we just got a bit sloppy and, and a little bit lethargic, I felt. And, mm. and that played into Gillingham's hands. I think that was like their first cross of the game and their first attempt on target. And yeah. I think it might have been their first attempt, their yeah. attempt on target. Yeah. And they end up getting a draw and then winning it on penalties. And that's something that's disappointing. But 
these things happen in football sometimes. So, wait, like you said, went to penalty shootout. And you, well, I'm going to actually go to you, Amber. <laughs> Been involved in any penalty shootouts? <laughs> yeah, last season. Um, I think it was the, the League Cup, actually, um, with Brentford Women's. Travelled all the way to New Haven, took it to penalties. Shouldn't have taken it to penalties, should have won it in the, in the 90 minutes. It's the last person to step up. Blasted oh. over the bar. Oh, so, uh, so <laughs> similar. To obviously, Mikel hitting the bar, but what 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 did you need at that moment, and what will he need? Because he also, again, like again, I don't want to keep belittling the competition, but I've seen people lose on penalties and not react like he did. He, straight away, his shirt was over his yeah, head, and that's that's exactly you what saw I did. How much he cared, and what did you then need, and what will he need this week going into? the game against City and also you never know with the World Cup on the horizon he mm. might be put in that situation yeah. again but we know technically he is so good yeah. with the ball. Yeah. Just support just support around him and kind of although yes it was a cup game and you wanted to win but ultimately you've got other things to focus on now so forget that focus on the next thing uh, whether it's a, a win on the weekend or the World Cup like you say um, but just know that if you are put in that predicament again that everyone is behind you and believes in you and to score yeah. well, well look we have got to move on and we've got to look bored and it doesn't get much harder than <laughs> <laughs> Saturday's game against Man City um, look they're probably arguably the best in the world we're not going to have that discussion right here but that, that's uh, I don't know if this is bothering me, we did all right from last season. We did all right, we did all right. I mean, I remember having conversations with people when I went to the, at the Etihad and, and saying, it was a case of how many we're going to limit them to. And actually we did all right, you yeah. know, for the first half, it was right towards half time that obviously things changed uh, in that game. And, and likewise, even at, at Brentford, we, we, we did well against them. So um, I, I don't know what it is. I just have this weird feeling that we could actually get something out of this game. That would be the most Brentford story ever, <laughs> that we would get something out of this game. But I just think, it's, it's, in a way, it's a perfect time to take on a City side just before the World Cup. All those thoughts, don't get me wrong, obviously we have players who are in World Cup squads as well. But, you know, just some people starting to think about, well, I don't, you know, how committed am I going to be in some of these tackles and in some of these moments in the game which I know is risky but they're, they're going to be thinking about the World Cup more maybe than, than maybe that game and City are going to come into expecting to win it of course and maybe that mm. plays into our hands. Well it's, it's interesting you said that Pep said in the week we have, we've got a quote kind of he's saying look he thinks already some of his players are, are looking at the World Cup and, and that kind of thing and he said well and it, an injury in Brentford or this, this result he doesn't think is going to affect Mm. them actually winning the Premier League but he said if they get injured it will affect such a momentous occasion in their career and it's such yeah. a big thing like a World Cup I don't know if I'm reading too much into this but <laughs> I'm, do, not, I'm not doing team news you do here. remember that <laughs> Harland is not going to I'm the not, World Cup I'm not, but, <laughs> and I'm, look it's a good job I'm not doing the analysis <laughs> for the squad for the game but if I am I'm, I'm moving that team around I'm putting some people in youngsters they're all young and playing I don't know I mean I, Even I, if it is, it's yeah. still going to be incredibly yeah. good for the say, It's still going like, to be an unbeatable team. Um, I, don't, I don't know if he'll, if he'll rest people. Um, maybe if, if he felt that the game was going their way, then maybe, but um, to be if, honest. If you were in their shoes, how would you be feeling going into this game? I mean, I know it's very far-fetched. But very, very, very far-fetched, <laughs> I would agree. That's a tough one for me to think about. Wow. Um, what would I do? I think we know more than Carly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, what would I do? Um, uh, to be fair, knowing me, I probably would have been injured already. No, look, I, I, any time there was kind of a big game coming up, I never really changed what I did. I just kind of was the same um, player. I, just, I trained the same. I tried to play the same. Um, so it, it didn't, I didn't really think about those things too much. <laughs> On the reverse of that, I probably should have. In my <laughs> head, but I never thought about things like that. And, and look, at the end of the day, they're professionals, so they're going to want to perform. But mm. at the same time, if you unsettle them early, um, and I think if you make the game physical, that will maybe creep into some of their minds. And that's what Fulham did most yeah. recently. Palace made it uncomfortable for yeah. them as well. And I know in the end they, they won both of those games, yeah. but they still made it difficult yeah. for them. And the, the only difference, of course, in this situation is the, is the uniqueness of a World Cup coming up. Yeah. That's, that's the strange yeah. thing and how they all approach it. That's what I think maybe something we can tap into, maybe just that mentality side of it. But it's still going to be hard. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've seen look, Leeds winning at Anfield recently. Yeah. Amber, we've seen Fulham, like you say, 
I'm not going to get into whether it was a penalty or not. Mm. Brentford Hat says it was definitely a penalty. <laughs> but I mean, the, the, teams are getting results at these places every now and then. And yeah. like, is it, we've got every chance, right? Yeah, like you say, it's on Saturday, it's their game. They have to play it. Yeah. Um, forget about the World Cup, ultimately, mm. because yeah. you're still competing in the Premier League. So go out there and try and get the best result possible and yeah. shake them. Yeah. Well, look, that kicks off a great weekend of football and hopefully it'll be the start of some of three brilliant results because of yes. course there's two games on Sunday to talk about um, the B team for the women's team have got a game at, at midday but also huge one and I imagine an immensely proud moment for you mate having played at Griffin Park and now going to be leading out for yeah. the women's team at the GTA you're smiling already mate yeah. <laughs> yeah. have you thought about that moment um I actually haven't thought about it okay. that much. Obviously, we've That's spoken sure. about it. <laughs> <laughs> spoken about it. But I tell you what, I have thought about. I've thought about how. Um, what are you going to wear? Yeah, I have thought about <laughs> yeah. that. Suit or I don't suit? know whether I'm going suit you always or track go track suit. Didn't you? I do always go track suit, but I don't know whether it's to go a little suit. bit. It, it has yeah, to go. I might go. I might go trendy pep or something like that. Maybe, yeah. maybe a little bit in between. Um, Before you start, shirt and jumper. Yeah. yeah. You having to go solo, right? Because yes, I'm having to go solo. Um, yeah, so my, he's normally very well behaved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so um, to be fair, it was harsh, but my assistant, unfortunately, is, um, has his face in ascending off and been banned. It's so I'm in. now um, solo. But, um, he played we, for Brentford as well, of course. Yeah, 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 we was in the same youth team. Uh, so for, it, it means so much for him as well. So I'm, I'm, I'm devastated for him, to be honest, because it, mm. it does mean so much for him. He's, he's, a, he's a good guy and he's, he's one of my best friends. So, But it's, yeah, like I said, it's, it's going to be an amazing, amazing day. It's... it's it's history. It's, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be history. And I think, I just, I, my biggest thing is I can't wait for for the girls. Really, I can't wait for them to experience the day because I think that's what's important that they get this experience and they get the feel of playing at the G Tech and and they get the applauds of of all the things. Because ultimately, you know, they're the ones doing the work to to get us in the right direction. So um, for me, that that's what it's about. It's about bringing those fans in and and giving the girls the best experience they possibly can have. Well, Sean, unfortunately, isn't the only person that's not going to be oh. in playing capacity or around that kind of area. Amber, tell everyone heartbreakingly what happened to you a couple of weeks ago. Uh, so a month ago, I've actually ruptured my ACL. Uh, so out for about nine to 12 months. Um, so I won't be playing. But You're that doesn't it, stop me. Yeah. I will be standing right next to Carly. <laughs> well, it sounds as though you're screaming and shouting. <laughs> so, um, yeah, screaming and shouting and supporting the girls as much as possible. Obviously, um, when I did it a month ago, I didn't think it was as serious as it was. I've gone through the, the scans and found out I've got surgery next week. So we'll hopefully be back, back sooner rather than later. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a massive blow, I think, for me. But... I'm just thankful that I can still be in and around supporting and hopefully assisting Carly on the weekend. <laughs> I, um, I don't want to embarrass her, but Amber, tell us about how big a part Amber's been of the club over the years as well. She's been a massive part of the club. Even from my playing days, Amber was around and, and doing stuff. And she, the club means so much to her. And um, of course, like I'm devastated for her that she's not going to be able to, to be playing, but she'll be part of it. Um, She's, she's, I'll be honest, the, the way Amber does so, she's dedicated her life to Brentford, she generally has. Um, she, she's a real incredible character. She's been wonderful in the changing room. Um, the girls love her. She's, she's a real leader. She tries to lead by the way that she plays, but also she's supportive of the girls and, and, and tries, to, tries to be um, an example to them. So, you know, I, th I think she needs to be recognised for that. And, and I'm, I'm proud to have her as part of, part of our team and our squad. And, and like I said, she'll be, she'll be important on Sunday as well, making sure the girls are ready. Well, we've seen the impact Pontus has had over the, over the last couple of years when he's not been able to be on the pitch. And I'm sure we'll see the Pontus roll from, from yourself <laughs> at the weekend. Um, unbelievably, over 7,000 people have registered interest for tickets. And I'm sure that will go up even more ahead of Sunday. Um, for those that are coming, Carly, give us a bit more of the, the story of the fixture and, and where both teams are kind of looking at the moment. Yeah, so obviously we're playing Watford uh, Development Squad. They're, they're kind of at the bottom of the table at the moment, so they're fighting for something. We're second at the moment, so we're obviously fighting for promotion. That's, that's what we want to achieve. We're trying to move the, the club forward and higher up the leagues as fast as we possibly can, but in the right way that's going to be sustainable long term. Um, so, you know, that, that's really exciting. At the moment, we're, 
we're playing in uh, a couple of leagues below the national uh, women's national league, which is you know becomes semi-pro from there. So that's where we're looking to get to as quick as possible, and and we're heading in the right direction. Um, the way that we're doing things, the way that we play, um, you know, we we do play exciting football when we're when we're on it and when we concentrate. <laughs> but we do play a really good standard of football, and and we play some exciting football, score some some really good goals, and we've got some really talented players. So. I'm, I'm just looking forward to the girls being able to show all of that off on Sunday. Emma, you can't do it, but come on, tell us a few of your teammates that we should be looking out for on Sunday. Um, Who are we going to get excited you, about? You've obviously got the two or the three in central midfield, so you've got Molly, Sophie, they're my best friends, but oh, let's leave, leave that to the side. Um, <laughs> but no, you've got Molly, the captain, um, who's a massive character and massive. Um, Squad, well, leader in that squad, uh, Sophie Trough. I'm sure you know about her. She only scores bangers and falls over a lot. Yeah, yeah. so I'm sure everyone will be watching that on, on Sunday. Um, but you've also got the addition of Laura uh, Miller in our team. So uh, Carly's decided to give everyone nicknames. She's come up. She's got a new nickname um, within the squad. So um, yeah, she's it's come in nice. and she's she's done a, a really good job Absolutely. job for us. Well, her nickname is actually Millsy because she hates being called Millsy. She only wants to be called Miller. And I'm like, no one ever says your full surname as your nickname. But um, the way that she plays, she's, um, she's got a few. She's got Little Javi, uh, it's Fimo and Iesta. Oh, she's she's yeah, a proper player. Proper yeah. player. So, um, um, and then also my centre-back partner, Regan. Um, obviously, I can't be there, so she will. Um, and she's ruthless, absolutely yeah. ruthless on the football pitch. So, and obviously, you've got Chloe up front that can score goals. So every week, yeah, pops up on the yeah, scorers yeah, list. Yeah, so, so um, she's what 16, 17. So yeah. she's really, really young. Uh, she's producing week in, week out, scoring goals, and she's almost obviously the way that we play. She's up top on her own at the moment, so she's doing it on her own. She's holding the ball, she's turning, she's scoring, and. It's exciting to see. Yeah. Really, really exciting to see. Yeah. Can't wait. Looking forward to it. And Natalie, you'll be you'll be hosting the day of Peter Gunnar's the yeah. 18th. Yeah, I'm I've looking forward to it. <laughs> uh, you're still very much a part of it. Don't <laughs> you go there? But um, tell me what we can expect. It's, it's going to be a great day, football-wise, and also there's a few bits and bobs going on around it's the stadium. A, it's just going to have a great atmosphere around it. The build-up to it, obviously, there's uh, face painting for anyone that wants to be fake. I don't, I I don't do want it. to just say it's for kids. I don't <laughs> think anyone wants to have their face painted. We're all managing do it. face painted. So we've got that. We've got the uh, Women's Euro Trophy as well. So, you know, when we remember Leah Williamson lifting it up in, in the summer, you know, you could be uh, having a picture alongside it. Uh, we've got a DJ as well got a DJ. in the stands. Yeah, I believe DJ Ben. <laughs> DJ Ben. <laughs> Love it. Like that. Love it. Confirm that. that is DJ, DJ Ben. I didn't yeah. know that. But DJ Ben, we're looking forward to him as well. So there's lots of just some exciting things to, to build up to it and I'm sure it will continue on after the game as well, that atmosphere. So yeah, lots to look forward to, it's going to be great. It'll be an amazing day. No matter what, the girls are going to do us proud. Carly, come on Amber, we'll get the win as well. Make sure you get down there to support them all. Tickets are free of course and available online. Let's make it an absolute sell out on a record breaking day. That's it for today. Probably the last one for a while with the World Cup break. So uh, cheers all. You Reds. Oh,